A Tale from the Care Bears, Caring is What Counts. Based on the TV special, The Care Bears in the Land Without Feelings. Story by Ward Johnson. Pictures by Tom Cook. Are you ready? Here we go. Hello, we're the Care Bears. We are a special group of colorful, round, snuggly little bears whose job it is to help you understand your own feelings and share them with others. As you can see, we have special pictures on our tummies, and those pictures tell you the special job each of us loves to do. I'm Tenderheart Bear, and it's my job to help people reach out to each other. I say that love is a warm, fuzzy feeling, so go ahead and share it. I'm Cheer Bear, and if you're sad or not feeling well, I'll slide down a rainbow and make you feel better. Smile! I'm Funshine Bear, so there's a great big happy sun on my tummy to remind you to laugh and look at the lighter side of things. You're in luck, cause it's me, Good Luck Bear. That's why I'm wearing a four-leaf clover. Don't count the number of birthdays. Count how happy you feel. I'm Birthday Bear, and I'll help make your birthdays the best ever. I'm Wish Bear, and if you wish on my star, maybe your special dream will come true. If you're ever feeling lonely, just call on me, Friend Bear. See, I've got a daisy for you and a daisy for me. Grrr. I'm Grumpy Bear. There's a cloud on my tummy to show that I can take the grouchies away so you can be happy again. I'm Love a Lot Bear. I have two hearts on my tummy. One is for you, the other is for someone you love. <sighs> it's my job to bring you sweet dreams. <sighs> I'm Bedtime Bear, and right now I'm a bit sleepy. Are you sleepy too? <sighs> now that you know all of us, we hope that you'll have a special place for us in your heart, just like we do for you. With love from all of us, the Care Bears. Things were buzzing in the land of care a lot. All the Care Bears were discussing which one of them would be voted Bear of the Week. Funshine Bear, who always had something good, who always said something good about everyone, did a little dance, waved her arms, and said, Oh, I just know that it will be Birthday Bear. Birthday Bear looked up from the new joke he was writing and smiled. Ha! Huh. I don't think any of us deserve to win, Grumpy Bear growled. None of us did anything really special this week. <laughs> don't be such a silly old grump, laughed Tender Heart Bear as he slid down a rainbow. Each one of us did so is special in one way or another, and we all helped someone this week. Even you, Grumpy, although you don't like to admit it. You're right about that, Tenderheart. Friend Bear added, I know who deserves to the award most this week. Bedtime Bear. He helped Sally get over her fear of the dark. Isn't that right, Bedtime? Bedtime? But Bedtime Bear wasn't listening. He had fallen asleep on a comfortable cloud. They were interrupted by the caretaker, who suddenly stopped shining a rainbow and called out, I think I hear someone crying. Care Bear alert! Care Bear alert! Whenever the Care Bears heard those words, they knew that they were really needed. They all ran to the edge of their clouds and looked out to see why the Care Bear alert had sounded. They saw a boy and a girl on a street corner. The boy looked angry, and the girl was crying. Please don't go, Kevin, the girl sobbed. 
You won't solve anything by running away. Kevin answered, I've got to get away, Donna. My parents don't understand me. They hurt my feelings, and now they want to move to a strange new town. I won't go. I'll run away first. Kevin, you know sometimes friends can help when you feel that no one else understands, Donna answered. If you talk to me, maybe I can help you feel better. May help you to feel better. Kevin gave a sad smile. Thanks, Donna, but I've made up my mind. I'm going to some place where no one can make me feel bad anymore. Kevin turned and ran down the block. When he reached the corner, he waved briefly to Donna and then was gone. Oh, Kevin, please be careful, Donna called after him. Friend Bear turned to the others. It looks like Donna needs the help of a caring bear. Who will help her? I will, shouted all the, shouted all the other bears at once. Well then, let's all go, said Funshine Bear. And they did. Donna was sitting on her front stoop, staring sadly into space, when she noticed that she was surrounded by a group of small bears. Who are you? She asked. We're the Care Bears, and we've come from Care a lot to help you let Kevin know that he can't, that he can't harden his heart and run away from his problems. Good luck, Bear replied. Oh, thank you, Donna said. Can you help me find him and bring him back? Well, we're not here to bake cookies, growled Grumpy Bear. Let's get going. While the Care Bears were talking to Donna, Kevin made his way across the city to a rusty gateway that opened on a large park. Kevin was thirsty, and he went inside to get a drink. Wait, and he saw a sparkling, and he saw a water fountain in the sparkling in the park. He went inside to get a drink, but he soon noticed that it was not a very nice place. The plants and flowers. He drooped, and the grass under his feet was dry and brown. Hmm. It does seem like a very desolate place. Before he could walk to the fountain, he heard a screechy voice say, I see you've come for a drink from my, f from my wonderful fountain, and it looks to me like you'll do. Kevin looked around and saw an odd-looking man walking toward him. I'll do for what? asked Kevin, suddenly afraid. First of all, let me introduce myself, said the man. My name is Professor Coldheart M.S. What does the M.S. stand for? Kevin asked. Mad scientist, of course, said Coldheart. What do you do that's so mad? Kevin asked timidly. Nothing, really. Oh, I do have a new plan to solve everyone's problems, and some stupid people think it's crazy. I'll show you how it works. Here, pinch this. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. And with that, Professor Coldheart held out his arm. Kevin did as he was told and pinched it. Didn't feel a thing, said Coldheart. Good thing, too, because otherwise you might have hurt me. Then I might have gotten angry. As it was, I felt nothing. Isn't it grand? If you never feel anything, you can never feel angry or sad. But, said Kevin, you never feel happy either. Coldheart, however, wasn't listening. Instead, he strolled over to the fountain and got Kevin a glass of shimmering cool water. Here, drink this, Professor Coldheart said. It will make you feel better, not so angry with your mother and father. How did you know about them? Kevin asked. Oh, we scientists know a good deal about many things, the mad scientist said smoothly. 
Kevin was feeling so bad inside and Coldheart seemed so sure of himself that Kevin reached out, took the glass, and drank the water. It felt icy cold as it went down his throat, and he could feel himself getting less angry. Soon, he didn't feel sad when he thought of moving to a new town. Finally, he didn't feel anything at all. Coldheart reached out and pinched Kevin. The boy didn't even notice. Aha! cried the mad scientist. I knew that my formula would work. Soon I will have everybody in the world not feeling a thing. Mm, that sounds like a bad idea, doesn't it? Just as Kevin finished swallowing the water, the Care Bears arrived at the park. Oh dear, said Tenderheart Bear, peering through the gate. What will we do? It looks as if Kevin will never feel anything again. And what is worse, said Cheer Bear, is that soon Professor Coldheart may have everyone in the world not feeling or loving anymore. And we all know that caring is what counts. That is right, Cheer Bear. That is right. For goodness sake, grumbled Grumpy Bear, when was the last time we Care Bears ever failed to help? One of us will have to go and rescue Kevin, that's all. But who will go? asked Birthday Bear. The thought of it makes me feel like a party without ice cream. Why don't you go, Grumpy? asked Funshine Bear. What a terrible idea, growled Grumpy Bear. All right then, sighed Friend Bear. I guess you shouldn't go. That's an even worse idea said Grumpy, and he floated up and over the gates to the park. He was soon standing next to Coldheart. Oh, said Coldheart, are you also here to drink my wonderful formula? I certainly am not, said Grumpy Bear. That formula is an awful idea. It will never help anyone enjoy life. You tell him, Grumpy. Coldheart laughed and said in a and said and then said in a very nasty voice, "Ha! What do you know? You're only a silly little blue bear." And Coldheart pushed Grumpy Bear away with one of his long, cold fingers. Now, this was the first time in his life that Grumpy Bear had ever been laughed at and he started to feel all sad inside. Coldheart could see that Grumpy Bear was feeling sad, so he whispered smoothly, You'd feel ever so much better if you took a drink from my fountain. Go ahead. Go ahead. When Friend Bear saw what was happening, he cried, Care Bear Emergency Alert! And with that, all the other Care Bears bringing Donna with them floated over the gates and into the park. You guys better hurry. When he saw them approaching, Coldheart said icily, Who asked you to come in? Scat! Get lost! Now wait one minute, said Lovelot. We're not going to let you make the world a better pl into a place where no one, where nobody has any feelings. That's right, Lovelot. <laughs> Try and stop me, sneered Coldheart. I've got Kevin in my power, and soon everyone will want my formula. We'll see about that, said Wishbear. Kevin, think about a time when your wish came true. How did it make you feel? But Kevin just stared straight ahead. The other bears soon realized what Wish Bear was trying to do. If they could if they could get Kevin to show some sign of feeling, Coldheart's power over him would be broken. Hey, Kevin, here's a good one, said Birthday Bear. What's green, has a stem, and lives in care a lot? A care pear. Get it? Oh <laughs> Good one, Birthday. <laughs> But Kevin did not crack a smile. 
For one short minute, the Care Bears began to get discouraged. Then, Good Luck Bear took a deep breath and, and called, Care Bears, line up. All the bears stood in front of Kevin. Now, Kevin, really look at us. Kevin turned, and when he saw all those pictures on ten fat little bear tummies, he began to feel some warmth in his heart. Oh, Kevin, Donna said, I think that you are going to smile. I'm so glad because I do like you so. Donna reached out and took Kevin's hand. When Donna touched Kevin, something wonderful began to happen in the park. Slowly, the trees began to turn green again, and new grass began to push its way through the ground. A gentle breeze brought the smell of flowers. And then, Kevin, as if waking from a dream, blinked his eyes slowly and gave a small grin. I like you too, Donna, he said in a quiet voice. Hurrah! cried all the Care Bears together. We've broken Cold Heart's spell, said Friend Bear. Cold Heart was wrong. People do still people still do want to share their feelings. I'm so glad, Lavalot said. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing more powerful than sharing and caring. Drat! snarled Cold Heart as he scuttled away into the park. The Care Bears have wrecked my plan. I'll have to come up with something else. So the Care Bears, Donna, and Kevin all went back to Kevin's house. When they got to the door, Funshine Bear said, Now, Kevin, go in there and try to talk out your problems with your mother and father. It won't be easy, but we know you can do it. Won't you come with me? Kevin asked. No, said Good Luck Bear as he handed Kevin a four-leaf clover. But take this for luck, and remember that if you ever need us, we'll be around. I promise that we'll think of you and watch you from care a lot. And they did. The end. Remember, running away from your problems never solves them. It's better just to face them head on. And as I said before... Nothing is more powerful than sharing and caring. See you later. Bye.